If ever there was a moment that I really looking forward to a glass of something, it is this moment now. Lately, I've been reading a lot of great things about Nihonshu, Japanese sake. I think I'd better give it a try. Let's see. Here we go. The JSS Information Center. I've asked my mate Wayne Shannon, who knows all about Nihonshu, to meet up for some insight. Oh, always building something in Tokyo. Hi Wayne. Oh hey Hi. Jess, welcome, glad you could make it. Let me introduce you to Imada-san, he's the general manager here at the uh, Japanese Sake Shochu welcome. Information Center. Okay, so Wayne, I, I love drinking it, but what is sake? So sake is a fermented beverage, it's not a spirit. One of the ways I always describe at the beginning, it's kind of like a beer made from rice that you should treat like a wine when you're drinking it cold. Uh, and it is made from water, rice, yeast, and mold. Mm, hold on a sec, that really sounds like a health food, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it, which is actually really interesting because sake has a reputation as giving the world's worst hangovers. Yes, it does. And we, <laughs> what, we're, what we're gonna mostly talk about today, we, it's called special designation sake, and special designation sake, with, the, with those ingredients that I just mentioned, it, it's pretty much as clean as alcohol can get. Oh, I really like the sound of that. So there's one more thing I was wondering about. You mentioned mold. So mold sounds a little bit strange. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily a, a good thing when you find it on your food, but with what this stuff is called, it's called koji. koji. So it's a, it's a type of mold okay. that exists in Japan that is, uh, is used in all sorts of Japanese cooking and cuisine. Okay. Um, uh, miso is, is a key, oh, it's a key ingredient go. as well. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's necessary in the sake brewing process to kind of break the, the um, rice down when you're doing fermentation. Rice? How yes. was rice used? So, let's move over here. Okay. So, Obviously, rice is a key ingredient when you're making yes. a beverage made from rice. That's and what you've got here is different phases kind of of the, of the polishing. And that's kind of how the grades work. There are different varieties of rice, yes. but don't get stuck on them at the beginning. It's just like, it's, it's not like wine. Not like it's wine. not as, okay. as, as, as important at the start. Yes. It's, it's just find the sake that you like and enjoy. But basically what you've got here, yeah. I mean, rice starts off like this when, when it's oh, polished. Wow. Um, and then you come, when you see these numbers, 60%, 50%, 35%, that's how much is remaining after they've done the polishing process. So if you have a close look, you can see that one is obviously a lot smaller than the other. And this polishing is important because that's how the special designation grades work. So what's the white powder at the end? And that's basically the, the powder that's the leftover. It's used for all sorts of things, for cooking, you're making uh, oh, they crackers and all sorts of things. Sometimes they even so, ferment it wow. again and create some spirits and stuff. Oh, so it's, nice it's, it's not wasted. It's not just being chucked away. If you're drinking sake, I mean, drink it from whatever you want. Okay. Um, some, one of the best things that's, that you probably do have at home is, uh, is wine glass. Wine glasses will do. Absolutely. Just, I, I mean, sake, sake, honestly, think of it when you're drinking it cold in particular, like a beer made from rice. You should treat it like a wine, swirl it around. You can use the same words when you're trying to describe okay. it. It's, it's, yeah, no stress. Just, just drink it and enjoy it. Okay, oh, that sounds fabulous. Actually, when I uh, go to the supermarket, labels and all the different words are quite confusing. I get lost in all the labels. Yeah, it, it, it is one of the things, there's no sort of standardization. And the kanji that you've got down the middle, this is usually talking or often talking about the brewery or whether it's a special type of brand within the brewery. Okay. Ultimately, there's, when we're talking about special designation sake, there's only, there's only kind of three words you need to see. If you see any of these three words on the label, embedded in the label anywhere, it's, it's special designation. And these words are junmai, junmai. ginjo, ginjo. Honjozo. Honjozo. That doesn't mean if it doesn't have special designation status that it's not good. Uh, there's a lot of really, really cool things that breweries are doing out there at the moment uh, where they're trying new things okay. that don't fit into that classification. 
And honjozo, just to explain a little bit about that, um, I said before, water, rice, yeast and mold, sometimes the brewer chooses to add a little bit of alcohol, which lifts up the flavor and the aroma. They didn't do it for a bad reason. Okay. Uh, so it, it, it's not, it, it's just a different style. So it's, it's not stronger in alcohol either, it's just a different style, definitely recommend it. The best way probably to learn about this, to actually really understand it, is to visit a brewery. That sounds amazing. What are you up to tomorrow? Oh, I'm ready to go, I'm free. Okay, cool. Emara-san reckons there's a little brewery called Izumibashi down in Kanagawa can that's perfect for a day trip from Tokyo. I'll call down and arrange a visit and then we can see firsthand how sake is made. We'll squeeze in a tasting with food and discuss a little bit about how it matches so well. Love traveling by terrain. Wayne and I are taking the Odakyo Line romance car down to Kanagawa Ken this morning. Hey Wayne, that looks like our train now. Seeing as we're going to be close, my mate Charles recommends we head up to Oyama to see where the water source is for the brewery we're visiting. While we're there, we can check out a Fudi Jinja and talk about some of the religious and cultural points about sake. Okay, Jess, let's make our way up to Oyama and the cable car to a Fudi Jinja. Jimmy. Hey no, how are you mate? Hey mate, how are you doing? Everything going okay down there? Yeah mate, made it down here to Zinkuro, it's good. Awesome. Cool, we'll call you a little bit later, touch base, speak to you soon, have a good Bye, one. Bye mate, see ya. Okay mate, see ya mate. Bye. Bye. So, in a normal situation outside yeah. of the current situation, this is the tools about you wash your hands, you, you wash your mouth, you kind of like make sure you're nice and clean because in Japan water has a pretty strong purification kind of aspect in, in, in a lot of the rituals. And uh, come over here and check out the view. So, out there behind the trees, you've got the Pacific Ocean. So looking out over, over Kanagawa, it's a yeah, beautiful part of the world for sure. It's pretty, pretty special. And the thing, we were talking yesterday in the JSS about how the ingredients of sake, you, you've got the, the water, rice, yeast and mold. Um, water is critical, um, yeah. critical for any kind of uh, alcohol or any beverage even, I mean, uh, it, it, the cleaner the better. Globally, Japan has relatively soft water, so fairly low in calcium and things like that. Um, this area though, for mm. Japan, has pretty high calcium. It's, uh, so it's, it's, it's kind a little of, bit on the harder side. Yeah, yeah, oh, so it's a harder, harder style. So with that higher calcium that you get from this area, it will translate to how the sake tastes in the end result. Oh. So it's uh, something to look forward to. Yeah, I'm so interested in trying the difference. A lot of countries, alcohol is kind of uh, frowned upon, kind of a bit of a negative attitude from religion, from churches and things like that towards alcohol. Yeah. Not the case in Japan. Oh, really? So, yeah, in, in Japan, actually, the gods are pretty keen on alcohol. I like the sound of that. <laughs> in, in fact, uh, it was the Japanese gods that created alcohol back in prehistory. Um, they had a six-month party beside a riverbank in Shimane Prefecture. Oh, wow. And every year, they actually, in October, uh, they go down there again for, for a p bit of a party to Izumo Taisha to, uh, to decide on the fate of all of the other Japanese people. And uh, everywhere else in Japan, that month is known as the month with no gods. Yeah. But in Shimane Prefecture, it's known they as the all, month with gods. They all go there. Oh, very cool. All right then, let's follow the water from the top of the mountain down to the brewery.
So all of the water that you can see here, it's the water that's used for, for the rice for Izumibashi, which is the, the place that we're going to shortly. Okay. And uh, up there in the distance, that is where that water is coming from. So when we were, that's Oyama, Mount Oyama. It is, it is, yeah. So one of the cool things about Izumibashi, which is the brewery that we're going to just over here, is that they're one of the few Japanese breweries that it, it, it's not as common as you think, but they grow their own rice. It's a great way to kind of encapsulate the regionality a little bit more. They've got greater control and it kind of makes it a little bit more regional in a, in a way, it's great. Here we are at Izumibashi Shuzo, so Izumibashi Sake Brewery. Let's suit up and head over to the same Aki room, the polishing area, to talk about grades. So one of the, I think probably the very first thing that people need to understand when they're thinking about sake is the grade. And we haven't really talked yeah. about this too much, but it's not that hard to understand. The first thing is that the difference between normal rice and yeah. table rice, so sake rice and table rice, is that sake rice, I talked before about starch, the sake rice, the starch is all in the center of the grain. Yeah. So when you're polishing rice, when you, like pretty much all rice is brown with a couple of exceptions. Yeah. And so if you're polishing it, you're polishing away the husk, the proteins okay. and all of the amino acids and everything that makes the seed grow, getting closer and closer yeah. to that, that pure starch. Yeah. So when you're polishing, this machine here oh. is basically sending it in. Yeah. The brown rice is going up, it's going through, it's coming out, little pieces of, of the side of each grain is being knocked off. Yeah. And then it goes through and goes down and again and again. Going. Exactly. And over a period of hours and sometimes days, the grain is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And the reason why this is so important to understand is that the smaller that it gets, the more elegant it's going to be, oh, but obviously yeah. the more expensive yeah. because there's more wasted. Oh, it's not flavor intensive, kind of the opposite because it's actually, it's more and more elegant oh, okay. and losing all of those brown rice characters. So it's not, it's more expensive, not because it's better or worse, it's more expensive because if you have a, a grade of a rice that's had like 40% as on all that's left, yeah. that means if you had a ton, that's 600 kgs oh, of wasted okay. rice. Yeah. That's why it's expensive, oh, okay. not because it's better. Okay. Yeah. But when it does get to those, it's going to be more elegant, more aromatic in a floral kind of way usually, or maybe yeah. anise. Once the rice is polished, like yeah. from an understanding, that's probably the most important thing in my opinion because then you can start to break it all down afterwards when you understand the way that the grading is done. Yeah. The, what's kind of important as well is when you do see a percentage on the label, it's what remains of the grain. What we had in there earlier was 58. Yeah. What that means is 42% of the grain is gone. 58 remains. Sake isn't a spirit. It's not possible to get that strong. It's, it's not possible. You have to distill something to get that strong. So if you see the lumber, it's what remains of the grain. Ah, okay. So a lot of people come at it like it's wine and see a percentage. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. And they'll think it's a spirit. It's like and so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, That's exactly. Not the case. It's definitely okay. not the case. It's not possible to okay. get that high. So these are polished grains. That's right. You can really see the heavy starches just in the center. So what's going on here? The team are washing rice here to prepare a batch of koji. Remember, koji is the mold that will convert our starch to sugars for the yeast to ferment. Mmm, that looks tough. You've got that right. They're washing and soaking rice, which has to be timed down to the second to ensure the correct amount of moisture is within the grains. Here, the team is removing a batch from the steamer. More back-breaking work. This rice is really hot. So the team is going to let this cool a bit by breaking it up and moving it to a separate area for the preparation of the koji application. So Wayne, what's this room? That room is called the koji muro. They mix the koji kin, which is the type of mold that they put over the top, then they wrap it up. And so it's gonna be in here for days, getting warmer and warmer. And then they're always breaking it up and mixing it again. Like if you get in kind of closer, you can yeah. see, but it kind of looks more like popcorn. Yeah, it's got a bit of a white tinge to it. So smell it. Oh, that's so cool. 
And like I said, it's, it's like moldy rice. It's rice that's had yeah. mold on it, but it's not what you're thinking potentially. What the mold is doing is it's breaking down the starch into sugar. Okay. And so you can kind of see on there a little bit, it's almost like icing sugar. To be honest, is what it tastes like to me is like almost like uh, popcorn with icing sugar on it. It's a beautiful taste. Oh, if you had it at if you this have it, you can moment, eat it, you and you tried it. Yeah. Really? Do you feel the heat that's coming off that? Yeah. That's one of the reasons this room is hot as well. This is self-generated heat. That heat no is coming way. from the, the corgi breaking oh, down wow. the starch and it's generating oh, that much amazing. heat. that's amazing. And again, so it's going to be hotter here steps. than it is down here. Okay. So one of the jobs <laughs> is to move it all around and rotate it around to try and keep that wow, even, that's so labor even breakdown. Here we have all the fermentation vats you're smelling. That's yeah. what fresh, fresh sake smells like. It smells good. So, you smell that. Oh, so it smells awesome. It's pretty amazing, isn't yeah. it? Like very kind of almost tropical, like banana-y kind of smell. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty so amazing. Fruity, yeah. And so this, this is the fermentation tank. So this is where the magic is happening. So fermentation is when yeast is metabolizing sugars into alcohol and car uh, carbon dioxide. Oh. So that's where the bubbling, bubbling is coming from. Yeah, there's a lot of bubbling happening. And uh, one of the things that happens during the process is that we need to stir it to make sure that all of the rice that's fallen down to the bottom is getting mixed up with all of the rest of it so that the fermentation happens. Okay, you could eat up. Oh, mother, mother. Oh, it's a lot heavier than I expected. This is actually like the seventh day of fermentation. So what I was talking about before, what they're doing is they're adding more and more rice and it's really, really thick. So on the third day of that, it's yeah. so difficult. This it's is in comparison, to get really... oh, okay. this is pretty easy. Before as time goes on, it gets harder to pull up. No, it, it, as time goes on, it kind of gets a little bit more, uh, more liquidy, I guess, if oh, that makes sense. Oh, okay. Well, I'm doing a terrible job. Pro <laughs> We were just sort of mixing up right. the mash, right? So yeah. that mash is going to keep on fermenting for a couple of weeks at least from now. Pressing, if you Put think it of in. it kind of like a filtration, yes. effectively there's ways of doing it. Um, this one is called a fene. Yeah, so, sake so, so the sake okay. will end up in these bags and the oh, liquid it, will come out. But it gets squeezed from there, And right? then the, the, the rest of the solids will stay inside. Oh, so wow. they'll, they'll lay these bags backwards and forwards along okay. here. And then this thing, some of it's being pushed out by gravity. Yeah. And then the rest of it, maybe they'll just a little bit Push of a press, a little time. bit of a press. And the first stuff is more elegant, usually, yeah. uh, smoother. The last stuff, by the time they get to the end, they probably, maybe it's a different label, maybe they're pushing harder, it won't be quite as elegant. Oh, so you uh, get different grades depending on yeah, which yeah. stage of the person. And, and sometimes you'll have these bags where they're just hanging and then it's just dripping down. And those, yeah. are the, those tend to be the most expensive of all of the stuff. Oh. There it is, fresh pressed sake. Now we've seen how it's made, it's time to head out and taste some. And the food to match looks pretty awesome too. Speaking of food, I wonder how our mates in New Zealand got on with the sake and barbecue event. Let's check in on Queenstown.
chicken looks awesome. It's making me hungry. Let's head back to Izumibashi's restaurant. When we were looking at the mash before, the, when we did the stirring, yeah. and when you press it, some of the solid left behind has has remained in the bottle, so they they didn't they didn't completely filter out all of the solids. So that's what a nigori sake is. And sometimes when you see them, they are it's very very thick. Like you look at it and it looks like milk. Yeah. Some people think oh, it, it, it'd be so sweet, but nigori sake it can be sweet or dry. And if you smell that, yeah, it smells, it smells awesome. a lot like the brewery when we were in before. Yes, right? it smells pretty yeah. similar. If you taste any type of fruit, then I guess the next question is what type of fruit. Oh. You know, sometimes people say, oh, it tastes fruity, and it's like, well, there's a Which difference one? between a, a lemon and a peach. Right. Something. So if you're tasting those sorts of things, you kind of try and break it down a little bit. And over time, you find uh, that it becomes easier, that okay. vocabulary. Really, the only thing, though, is if you like it or not. Oh, it's right. delicious. Personal preference really, is Really, really, really delicious. For me, there's kind of like a banana-y, yogurt <gasps> aspect to it, but it's kind of almost like a, a, a banana that. that's been uh, fried oh, yeah. a little bit, like it's a caramel kind of toffee oh, banana sort of thing. And it's got a really good acidity, which is not yeah. necessarily common for sake. Um, sake is quite famous for being quite low, but it's, um, I just say it's pretty delicious as well. Yeah. And before, before you finish that down, okay. and, and I know it's been a long day, um, <laughs> the reason why we've got these three glasses here is this sake now okay, is going to taste pour. different. So I just put some in each glass. Absolutely. And, and so then, there's so three different glasses, very three different, different shapes. Sizes. It doesn't different. smell the same, does oh it? Oh my gosh, it's totally different. What? Like for me what now... What kind of magic is this? Isn't it? <laughs> I don't so smell cool. any banana That's anymore. Right. Smell is so different. So th this glass here, I'm really excited because I've never drunk from a glass that looks like this. <laughs> so what the theory is, it will taste different if I sit from here than it will if I sit from here. Because your mouth is, my mouth shape will be a different is a different shape, shape it will and the aroma is going to hit different. Yeah. It is totally different from that. It was really, really different. That tasted really quite sharp in that glass. Yeah. This tastes really, really round and creamy. This is really smooth. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Wow. wow, 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 wow. That looks pretty amazing. Yeah. Chawamushi and the spoon is tricky. I'm gonna pick it up. Mm. So when um, I drink quite a lot of different sake, and sometimes I have it hot, and sometimes I have it cold. Like, when should I be drinking hot and when should I be drinking cold? And like, is there a certain type of sake that should be hot? Type of sake that should be cold? Like, what are the rules with hot and cold? As a general rule, the highest grade of sake, the daiginjos, they're usually quite elegant. And if you heat them up, it's almost like drinking a warm white wine. It doesn't, uh, okay. it, it doesn't bring out the, the, the good part of it. So there's a sweet spot that the white wine will have. So as a general rule, the highest grade kind of gets blown apart a little bit by... Like it's kind of a bit of a waste to heat it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, there's been this idea around that hot sake isn't good. And that is the only sort of sake that you find that's hot. Okay. Uh, because people have heard that sometimes you can hide hot sake, a uh, bad sake, by heating it. Yeah. Um, there are some sakes that are made to be consumed hot, and uh, it exaggerates different flavors in a good way. Right. Some sakes have multiple sweet spots. The thing is also like if you imagine, um, so sake works really well with with cheese. Um, I could talk about really? that shortly, honestly. <laughs> so if you have cheese. a hot sake and you have some oily cheese, yes. the heat will actually clean your palate. There you go, okay. So a That's hot sake and pizza might be a phenomenally <gasps> good match. Sake and pizza, hot, sounds yeah, awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. It's like two of your favorite things. Yes, and yes. now an excuse to drink them together and eat them together. Sounds fabulous. Mm. Oh, that's good. It's so slow. Oh, looks great. Mm. So this sake has a lot of umami. It's, it's a heavier flavor okay. that you get from it, it's heavier taste, sorry. So I pretty much guarantee it's gonna be off the chain with that. 
Mm. Mm. It's good. That's amazing. Mm. And when you have two things with your mommy, ham and cheese, um, they roasted, go so well it, 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 it just adds. Yeah, perfect. What do you got? So 55%. Okay. So remember, that is what remains after fermentation. So, so taken away. 45% is wow. gone. So what that means is we're getting closer to that uh, that starch yeah, in the middle. middle. In general descriptors, a Jumai Ginjo is going to be quite fruity. This sake hasn't been pasteurized. Oh, okay. So this is a sake that needs to be kept refrigerated. If not, it's going to just keep on developing in an uncontrollable way in the bottle. So this is something that needs to be kept. Yeah, absolutely, unless it keeps. The other thing about this one is it's a Genshu, which means it hasn't had any water to dilute it. Oh, interesting. So when they add water at the end of the sake production, they're not doing it to bulk it out. They're doing it to find the best spot that they think is the best. Right. Like if you drink whiskey, you add a little bit of water to find where you like it. This one, I'm going to assume, has a lot of power okay. and I think it's also going to taste quite different because I think it's going to be quite lively. And the, that, the glass again is very like Yeah, this very, very wide. interesting style How do we of hold glass. this? Uh, carefully, I think <laughs> is the best way to do it. Oh, so fruity. There's a lot of sweet, fruity flavors for me. It's really, really nice. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. It's like, yeah, man, I can keep drinking this forever. Mm. It's got a lot of depth oh, and complexity. Well. And sometimes if you have difficulty describing what you're tasting, but you yes. like it, that's because it's really good. <laughs> if it's easy to describe, maybe it's simple. No. Right? Oh, okay, there you go. So what is also very interesting about this type of sake, something it's, it's made in a labor intensive style mm. and as if making sake isn't difficult enough as it is, this style is significantly more difficult. It's called kimoto. It brings in a certain depth of flavor that doesn't exist in, in, in the fastest style. And that depth of flavor, some of it comes from the fact that there's more lactic acid present. Lactic so if you think acid. of lactic okay. acid, think of things like milk and yes. butter. So if there's a, and, and also funnily enough, sourdough bread. Okay, so the there you best go. way I can think of is describing Kimoto and also it's sort of sister style, which is Yamahai. Very, very similar, but different. Um, more lactic acid. It's kind of the way, some of the new style makes me think of white bread. This style makes me think of sourdough. Sourdough, right? Okay, there you I'm, go. I'm a big sourdough That's guy. quite like so, specialist and a bit artesian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and and I would say fundamentally better. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> personal go. preference, personal right. preference. Okay. But, uh, it's, it's a, it is a lot of the reason why the sake has so much depth is because of that. It takes about two weeks longer to make. Oh, there you go. And okay. in that two weeks, very interesting things obviously happen. Mm. Now this one, the, the polishing rate is 65%, right? 65. So how much oh, yeah, that mean is gone right. is... Jumai. It is a jumai, excellent. So this... I'm expecting this to be more fuller in flavor. Okay. And I'm expecting it to be deeper in flavor, which for me is a preference. So the highest grade and the lowest grade of the special designation, one's not better than the other, it's just what you're into. Right, and you like Junmai. I do. Okay. And I also like the lower grade, like Honjozo and Junmai. Okay. Teriyaki really flavors, so it, quite heavy, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. needs something kind of that can handle that. So if you had something elegant, maybe it can't handle this. It's just going to get beaten up by the food. Right. So that's one of the fundamentals of food matching, trying. trying to find that balance. Mmm. And these glasses are awesome, man. Eh? These glasses are so cool. Your mm. nose gets in there. You have to acknowledge everything that's, that's going so on. If you drank this from a short, like a champagne flute. Yeah. A lot of it will get lost. It's oh, like okay. strangled almost. Oh, there you go. So this is to help you enjoy the flavors. Absolutely. Of Not the just diamond. so you look cool at the table, swirling. <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> Showing off. Uh, so well, you call this atsukan? Yes. So this is uh, heated sake. 
Okay. The, uh, there's multiple different names in Japanese um, for different temperatures. Yeah. Uh, room temperature, body temperature, all sorts of things like that. Body temperature? Yeah, it, it, the flavor is so different. It's really? very specific. Um, but this is, wow. this is Atsukan, so it is a hot one. Hot one. Hot one. And, and what should I do? There's, there's various protocols okay. that you're supposed to do. Should I just and, like, but I mean, here? ultimately, don't worry about it. When sake is rested, it brings out certain sherry characteristics, and that's one of the reasons why maybe you get a little bit of nuttiness from yeah. this. This is an amazing sake for sure. When it comes to special designation sake, um, you have very specific rules to be allowed to be called these, these special sakes. But sometimes a brewer just wants to do something different. They just want to step out of the box, right? Do their so own thing. These special designation sakes, they're not better than some of the other ones. Okay. You just know more or less what you're getting. Some of the coolest sakes you will ever taste are not special designation. That is something that the brewer as an artist went, I'm gonna I try wanna it. do something. Right. Okay. It's, uh, so my recommendation for all sakes is give them a go. Yeah. If you don't like it, don't buy it again. Okay. Is there like a website that I can go to and I'll be like, okay, I'm having a party at my house and I'm having people over and this is what I'm serving, what should I pair it with, like, sake-wise? You start off a meal, you usually have lighter flavors and you finish with heavier flavors. Okay. And you start off, a, if, if you're doing a flight of drinking, you might start off with sparkling wine and finish with a big red wine. Right. So if you think of the sake being the same, maybe start off with a daiginjo and then finish Go with down. a junmai. Okay. So go from heavy, uh, sorry, light flavors to heavier flavors. Go from light to heavy to as heavy. a rule. Yeah. Okay. And That's quite often easy. sweet with sweet is not a good idea because um, it oh. might get cloying. Mm. Um, Hot with hot with sashimi is not necessarily a good idea mm. because it might make fish taste like it's been so sitting in the sun. So just use your common sense, right? There's a, there's a common sense okay. aspect, but it's also like matching sake with food is actually really easy. Mm -hmm. It's it's um, if it's a if it's a fairly standard style of mm. sake, fairly easy. You're okay. more likely to get it right with sake than you are with wine. Oh, that's good to know. And I and, and sometimes you say I've said that sake matches better with food than wine. What I mean is you could swap that word better with easier. Ah, uh, easier. It's harder to, okay, to get it wrong yeah. with sake than it is with wine. Everybody should be drinking sake then. I think they agree. <laughs> I think they agree. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Mmm, oh, wow. it's so sweet. Oh, it matches really well. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, what a way to finish, eh? Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, that's the thing, like, there is a lot of complexity that mm. goes into making this stuff. It's, it's, there's a lot of pride, there's a lot of, like, Super meticulous, it's crazy hours. Um, one of the breweries I worked in, they worked 19 hours a day. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, like, mm. so much of it just comes down to like enjoying a glass with a friend and and just having mm. a good time, right? Yeah. And when you, when you taste these sorts of things, it kind of pulls it all together. We need to know where it comes from, but we shouldn't take it too seriously. Otherwise, we just stress ourselves out. Should I like it? Shouldn't I like it? Like, which one to choose? How I mean, to describe it? It's yeah. uh, uh, again. Yep. The, uh, Cheers. Final kampai. You did a good job, Wei. Cheers. I'm. Uh, it's awesome. I'm, you I told hope me a this lot. This was fun. Yeah, it was. Thank you. I learned a lot. When you're in Tokyo, stop by the JSS showroom and try some delicious sake.